So I'm an entertainer. I make my living traveling the country and doing hundreds of mind reading shows from coast to coast every year. And during those shows, I tell uh, audience members their birthdays, I guess their passwords, I unlock their iPhones, see while blindfolded, and predict their decisions before they've even made them. How do I do it? I'll give you the same answer I give all of my audiences. I'm a really, really good liar. That's why I've chosen to call my talk today lies, or more specifically, honest lies. Because I like to think that while I'm lying on stage, at least I'm using those lies to give my audience the truth. So recently, I was on my way to a show. I was walking through the airport in Kansas City when this lady, this very mysterious woman, stopped me and struck up a conversation. And then out of the blue, she says, you know, my friends tell me I'm psychic. And I could tell she meant it. And I think she could tell I didn't believe her. So she tried to convince me. She told me my profession. I'm a performer. She guessed my star sign. I'm a Libra. And she even got my birthday exactly. How could this lady, who I'd never met before, know so much about me? And as that was spinning through my mind, she leaned forward and she said, you don't have to believe this, but hear me out. You can do so much more and go so much further than you're even aware of. You don't have to believe me, but remember that. You don't have to believe me, but remember that. Interesting words. And that was it. I got in my car, I drove away, but all I could think about was this conversation. To a person less versed in the deceptive arts than myself, that conversation might have been all they needed to become a believer. Unfortunately for that lady, she ran into me that day, and the truth is, I knew exactly what she was doing. I wasn't amazed, and I definitely was not a believer. But I had to tell you the story from the perspective of a believer, so you could see how easily someone can be duped. So let me tell you what really happened. A couple minutes before I met this lady, I was standing in line waiting to rent a car. I was on the phone with my wife. I was telling her I'd made it safely to Kansas City, and I was about to drive down and set up my show. My show. I set it on the phone, and this lady sat no more than 10 feet away and heard every word I was saying. And I got up to the counter, and I had to tell the agent my birthday. And that lady sat within earshot and heard every single word. And I imagine in her head she started to put this conversation together. And then when I walked by, it played out exactly how she planned. Except for one thing. When she asked me if I was impressed, that she knew my profession, or my star sign, or my birthday, I said, no, I'm not. Because you heard me say I'm a performer on the phone, and you heard me say my birthday at the counter, and it'll take a whole lot more than some clever eavesdropping to convince me otherwise. And then she gave me that whole thing about belief, and I nodded, and I left, but she was right about one thing. I'll always remember that conversation because it's the perfect example of how easily someone can be convinced of supernatural phenomenon when they don't have all the facts. As a skeptic and an artist, I'm faced with an interesting artistic conundrum. And the problem is this. How can I perform feats of mind reading that feel real while simultaneously never claiming any supernatural abilities? Let me show you. Let's see. Um, does someone down here have an iPhone that I could borrow? You want to mind borrow? You got one? Would you join me up here? Just grab the stairs and come up here, okay? And let's get someone over on this side. Would you mind? Take the stairs, go out past that way and come up. As they're coming up, give them a nice round of applause. Mm. Perfect. Stand right there for me. Right to the left here, if you don't mind. There you go. Hey, your name? Dylan. Dylan. I'll just use hers if that's okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, and what's your name? Ella. Ella. Ella and Dylan. Great. So we're going to try an experiment. If you'll step up to the uh, side of this stand here, the experiment's very simple. I need to. Um, Ella, is this charged or turned on? Oh, yeah. Here, I'll use yours if it's on. No problem. <laughs> you're, just, uh, you're just being polite. Wonderful. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to use an experiment with objects, words, and numbers. So to start, we'll use the numbers. We'll use uh, your calculator. Very simple idea. Um, let's see. Yeah, this will work. Um, Ella, just type in maybe a two-digit number. Two-digit number there. Let's see. Two-digit number? 
Okay. Hit plus or times. Okay. Same for you. Okay. Hit plus. Oh, that's okay. Um, two digit number. Perfect. Yeah, anything you want. Hit times. And just a one digit number. Okay, we'll hit equals. Now, uh, I don't really want to see that, but uh, it'll be okay. Take this for me, if you don't mind. Write that number big on the back of this card, and when you're finished, lean it that way so no one can see, okay? And then you can give him back his phone. You're going to help me with this. I'm going to blindfold myself using all these items, okay? So we have two silver dollars. I can't see through these. Five pieces of duct tape. Just follow along. Coin number one goes on the center of this piece of tape, goes firmly over my left eye. Coin number two on the center of this strip of tape goes firmly over my right eye. Ella, did you write the number? Yeah. Okay, great. Would you hand me the little piece of tape on this side, please? Perfect. We'll put it right there. Would you give me the uh, little piece on this side, please? Perfect. All right, on top of everything goes this blindfold. Can you see through that? No. 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 Perfect. And then finally, Ella, if you would slowly pull that piece of tape off the back there and hand it to me. I need it for something. This is the convincer. So, uh, Dylan, right? Yeah. Dylan, I'm going to give you a marker here. Behind the lies sign, there's another board with a line running across the middle. When you slide that board out, leave the lies where it is, I need you to write a word above the line. A random word. Not too long, but... Something, uh, something random. Ella, for you, step down here and borrow an object from someone nearby. Just something interesting, just one object. And when you've done that, come and stand next to me. Dylan, did you get the board? Yeah. You did. Write the word, and when you're done, hold it up against yourself so no one can see. If you have an object and you want to loan it to Ella, go ahead and do that. Ella, do you have an object? Yeah. Okay, great. Hold it up so everyone can see. And then when you've done that, put it between my hands. Don't touch it to my hands, but just put it between my hands. Let me know when it's there. Okay. It's there. Okay. I'm going to move around. Don't let me touch it. Okay. This is pocket size, probably from uh, a young lady, yes? Okay. This is, it's soft, like smooth to the touch. But, like all, but, but very solid, very, uh, hmm. Metallic, maybe? Yeah. Yeah? A little bit. A little bit, okay. Um, is this a container of some sort? It's like, it's like just a couple inches long, like, or like, kind of like cylindrical, maybe? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Is there something in this? Yeah. Yeah? This is like, uh, it's silver, yes? Yeah. Silver there? It's like, is this someone's lipstick, maybe? Yeah. Yes, perfect. Okay, great. Uh, oh, thank you. Yes, that's wonderful. Thank you. Dylan, I'll take the marker back. You got it? And then I'll take the board, wherever it is. Just keep the word facing out this way so uh, everyone can see. The kinds of things that Dylan likes to think about. Okay, uh, I said a random word. I think, <laughs> I think you went for something that's five letters? Yeah. Is that right? Okay. It is right way up, yes? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Steak? Yeah. Is that right? <laughs> Hold on to that. Thank you so much. So, Ella and Dylan, before I let you go back, this is everyone's favorite part. One strip of tape comes off. You can push through. You can fill the coins. Still there. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoying this way too much. Dylan, there they are like this. And with any luck, <laughs> I should still have my eyebrows. There we go. Dylan, you can keep that. Ella, give them both a nice round of applause. Fantastic. <laughs> So I know that feels, oh, thank you so much. I know that feels impossible and hopefully amazing. But um, it's nothing more than a really, really good trick. And I want my audiences to know that I'm nothing more than an entertainer. Even so, I'm still approached by people after my shows who are convinced I'm the real deal. They want me to tell them their future or speak to their dead relatives. So let me go on the record today. Let me be very, very clear. I can't really read minds. I'm not really psychic. I don't possess any supernatural abilities, nor do I claim to. But, at least when I'm standing on stage, 
but I'm lying to you, at least I'm being honest about my dishonesty. In the history of the world, there's never been any evidence for anything supernatural. The answers to life's mysteries are much more exciting than that. So I urge you, the next time you experience something that feels real, that feels impossible, maybe even feels supernatural, take a good hard look. Turn it upside down. Really examine it. Because sometimes you've got to change the way you look at things so you can see what was really there all along. Of course, you don't have to believe me. Just remember that. Thank you very much. <laughs>